So the buyer is always um, younger and more affluent than the non-buyer. That's something we find um, repeatedly. And the other thing is they're two times more likely to agree with the statement, planning for long-term care is an important thing to do. Mm -hmm. Non-buyers, they're not planners. So anytime we try to um, readjust our marketing message to appeal to the buyers, we want to talk about the importance of planning, planning ahead. The other thing about buyers is that I think we tend to um, tend to not key on what's important to them in the decision-making process. They, what's important to them is the reputation of the insurance company and the recommendations from the agent. The agents tend to downplay their own ability to influence a buyer's decision if they've established trust and if they've established their role as an expert then the client will will take their recommendation so for too long we've relied on risk-based uh, presentation say here's your risk isn't that scary you should do something now. Um, instead, we need to move to a consequences-based presentation style, which says, Vanessa, it's probably not going to happen to you. In fact, the odds are very remote. It may never happen to you, but what if it did? There's never urgency in people's lives about something they believe will never happen to them. That's where we've been in the past. Mm -hmm. But never underestimate the ability of people to come up with money from nowhere to pay for something that's important to them. I think direct mail, generally speaking, is a very inefficient use of dollars. So that's all I will say on that. I've seen a lot of marketing threads um, on Producers Web where people um, argue the pros and cons of direct mail, and I've tried to stay out of those threads and trying to stay above the, the fray because my general feeling is that direct mail is very much a 10-year-old conversation. But I, I like to say that um, we practically invented the LTC category on Twitter and that if you're not following LTCA on Twitter, then you're not a player in long-term care. So. Get out there and follow us at LTC Associates. Um, and then we've expanded into our other social media platforms, uh, Facebook, YouTube, like a lot of folks have. But we've done it in a, um, in a coherent um, theme that we call education through social media. And this is one that we're going to be broadening now to all of our affinity groups, what, what we call our alumni associations, credit unions, fraternals, and we're going to be start including them and all of the, in this. Um, it's going to get very heavy in 2013, bringing them into the fold for this education, education through social media campaign. And then the other thing that we do um, using technology, like a lot of, I think it, it's being done in long-term care is the screen sharing, you know, the sales across the internet. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of folks do this. Um, we've been doing it for several years and it's worked out tremendously for our agents. Um, and anytime a company says, you know, we'll do an e-app or an app wizard or a quote wizard, any way that we can submit our applications online, we are an early adopter of that. Our agents eat that stuff up. We love it. I think our, our best strategy right now is simply one of transparency. So we have to be able to compete on something beyond that. Um, we can't hold ourselves higher than the consumer. And so we have to, if, if there's some total transparency, then we have to be able to compete on something else. And we have to find new differentiators from the other marketers, the other NGAs, producers. And I think that's a good thing. What's the one thing you can say what boils it down and makes you a, a, a dif difference maker? And in our case, I think we've chosen to hang our hat on claims because I think in long-term care, that's where the rubber meets the road. Um, you know, what? that's the one reason people buy these policies is claims, and I think that's the way we stand out. And so we redesigned all of our um, consumer-facing packages to talk about claims and what we do uh, in claims that we think is kind of uh, a cut above the rest. 
it's it's not simply a question of an exit plan. It's a question of keeping our commitment to our policyholders who will still only be 79. So, um, no, any quote-unquote exit plan will have to be policyholder first because they're counting on us. And that's that's what we've been hanging our hat on. 